Third map last time, these two teams went toe-to-toe, -to -toe, went all the way, overtime. We had all the drama, last second diffusers, a comeback. And well, G2 managing to get the victory this time round. OG, they're looking hot, they've been looking good, they've been looking consistent and keeping it close on train. Fills me with a bit of hope going into Mirage. Let's get this one underway. A bit of utility board up here on the T side. Two HEs in play, Alexi and Volder. They're heading the majority of the troops over towards the B apartments here. It looks like the bomb being left. They just want to offer up a bit of a fake. So they've postured forward. They've taken away that early CT information, but on the other side of things, Jax has quickly clawed some back. Yeah, had there been any uh, incendiary in play, that could have been drawn out of them as well. But as they do double back around, this is a lot of information for Jax. He spots more. And that early B presence is going to be null and void. It seems the CTs will have the right pieces in the right place. I say that as it is only Nexa at this moment in time. So if they get these double smokes out, it looks like one's destined for stairs. That's from Alexi, Valda for jungle. So they will be smoking off one side, isolating the jewels onto what would have been CT. Nexa, however, smoked off on jungle. So there is a lot of space for them to be taking. You can see that they are procedurally working their way through it. Nexa, a little bit of a nade shrapnel lodged in his thigh. Now a Glock bullet in his cerebral cortex. They going connector? Looks like these guys aren't quite done yet. They're just going to continue to run around. And that playing that objective does take one player out of the equation. It's Hunter, Amanek, and Jax to take one out each, and suddenly it's an advantage to G2. Now perhaps thinking better of it, this brawly style that OG have brought into the server today has bought very bitter fruit. Okay. Oh. Okay, taking some risks. Valda, six bullets. Oh. And no health. Jax and Amanek getting a lot of credit for that one. Kid will be here, so... Oh, have an snaking the diffuse there at the last second. <laughs> He's Come just on, mate. added five seconds to our life. Well, maybe they want to get that double orb set up out, Alex. You know, the one that we've been talking about. So Amanek, in the past, has been wielding that AWP over towards the B site with Kenny on the other big green. But remember, the G2 games on Mirage, quite aggressive. We've seen them go for A ramp pushes. They go for some palace pushes. They like to take the territory. And as we get into round number two, and the bomb was planted here from OG... Could be considering a force buy on the cards. So let's have a look. It will indeed. Four Galils. Make it Ooh, five, Lauren. This here we go. might get a little bit saucy. What do we have on top, though? Just the, the light dashing of three flashes and a smoke. Are they just going to BDP this? Oh, no. Molly's definitely saying no to it for now. Jack's up close. We've still got the SMGs here. Hunter's right there. It's all a good idea until a load of SMGs are in your face, but actually the flash is excellent. Couldn't quite contain it on the spray, so the CTs succeed, and suddenly the Ts are thrown into this terrible dilemma of how do we get back into this? You've still got a player towards Dark. You've got a player in towards now CT, and Alexi B, the only one standing for the T side. One minute 20. That was quick. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's hard to see how Alexi gets in this one with the low HP and the bomb down. I do like that G2 have definitely subscribed to this whole partners in crime mid-round. When there is a 2v2, as we saw in that Kenny clutch with Nexa, they just hit pause. Same can be done here. They don't actually have to actively hold the bomb, which they're not. They're just grouping together. Maybe they'll go palace together. You know, they can rat around. They can sit on this ramp. They can double peek. It's very likely that they end up, if they stay together, seeing Alexi either clearing into two of them or just planting in front of them. They don't have to really get too stressed. 39 seconds. I expect a jiggle to check the bomb's still there at some point. But at the moment, Amanek pretty confident there'd be more of a sound cue. So this would be his jiggle for the bomb. Yeah, oh, it's still there. I don't have to do anything. Cool. And now Alexi has to start getting a move on, right? Needs to make a little bit of a noise here and being on low HP. It's only going to take smoke. a tickle. Ooh, okay. Very loud now. And that was the 1v1 okay. that I thought we were trying what? to avoid. Amanek yeah. steps into his line of fire. Bomb now down. Alexi could win this. He could do a high flash. He's in trouble. Burning. Next with an MP9. Elevates. But no, not Sounds. to be. Good try from Alexi. And I'm not so sure whether Nex is going to have to give a slap on the wrist to Amanek. Was that part of the plan? Good save from the leader regardless. He's looking for any extra upgrades, any nades lying idle, any sidearms he can upgrade. But it will be 2-0. to zero. And Alexi giving it a real good shot. He had 20 HP throughout all of that, so credit where it's due. All right, well, the plant again puts us in that position that I like to talk about where the T's could go for yet another buy. They know that the CT side economy and the bonus they get for winning that round is not enough to have a potent buy or at least mm. a full gun round. So if you take your foot off the gas here, exactly, so this is good. So they are going to keep the pressure on. Look at this, Galil's again. 
it's likely their buy is better than the CT sided one who are throwing guns across. So they've made it work with three M4s, two MP9s, and a, a boatload of utility. Uh, kits right. as well. Oh, he's pacey again, though. Look at this. Look at the amount of map territory they're gaining, but they do have the extremities also being held. A four-play stack towards A from the CTs, too, could really leave Amanek very isolated. It's certainly a possibility. Poor soul. Kenny likely to support, though. They've completely given up mid-control here. Look how forward OG are. Vent control, connector control. They can get into window within the mid-round if they want. That nade to Valder's face was a little bit of a... Shock to the system. Are they playing the early? Yes, they are. So this is like G22. It's the early warning system of, of not breaking that vent. So if the T's want to swing around to go into spawn, they have to make that audible. But it's connected, eh? Still got Easter around as well, and that was the factor I was waiting to find out how much he gets from. Next to falls away. There's the flash from Kenny. Does catch. Oh, not many, actually. Valder not really caught by it. MBK on patrol. That's a lovely bit of work towards CT. Yeah, nothing Jax can do about this one. Just a formality. Amanek all the way at those B apartments, as you outlined at the start of this round. It's just going to be a question of trying to do a bit of damage. You know that the T's didn't bring it all of the bells and whistles. It was Galil's. And he is just going to tuck himself into a little cubby hole. Yeah, Put so... Some twigs and leaves. Yeah, what's that? Oh, twigs and leaves. Yeah, I don't know. With his cubby. You ever build a cubby as a kid? I, I used to build um, kind of pillow forts. Um, right. Me and my sister would rearrange the sofa cushions and build, use them as building blocks to kind of nice. elevate us. It, mine was less fort, more just throne. I'd just make a Hi. very large chair. <laughs> one one time. Precisely, height. yeah. I just wanted to be sitting at the top of the castle looking down on everyone. So actually, nice. Chad, you can probably relate. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's been nice. What's the What's the fairy tale about the, the woman? Princess and the pea. That's the one, yeah. Oh, well, that's me. Uh, this was quite nice towards spawn. The fact that they had the heads up awareness to take both of those jewels simultaneously. And Kenny not happy with how that one unfolded just there. I wouldn't be either because look what it's done. It's now left them in a position of a four spy. Kenny's the only one not fully investing so he can get that AWP out in the future. Hunter on the UMP. Amanek with the save rifle. They need to make some shots land here. Amanek's already He's pushed off the line. Okay. Jax? Jax gets away unchecked. Somehow behind... Enemy lines for a second or two does eventually get found, but for a second he did pose a little bit of a threat there. And th further threats, further afield. Amanek waiting for Mantu up towards ladder room, and it's Hunter posted up close towards ramp. Instantly cleared by Issa, it's on towards A. Yeah, lovely shoulder peek. Next is going CT route. He will be the first to uh, be able to contribute, but unfortunately with only MP9, no flashes for Amanek to help him. He's just going to either go and dry on the sound cue or double peek. MBK not going to get the information. It's Issa oh, and Alexi from Sandwich. They're doubling up there. That's nice. So if they kill Alexi, they won't expect a second. And that's exactly how it's supposed to go down. Lovely stuff from OG. Keeping it level. Keeping it equal. 2-2. Two, two. Now we get into a little bit of trouble on the G2 side of things. So you can see that extra money that Kenny saved means in the following round, he will have enough to buy the AWP. But right now, that's just the scraps for G2. So we should just be seeing an eco. A little bit of investment from Nexa here. Getting a HE. And a flash. I wonder what he's got in store for that one right there. A spawn over towards A, and that is also where he is facing. Might be trying to use them to corral them over towards... Uh, it's going to be a mid-pop right here. So the flash from Nexa could come over middle. There it is, and they're going to fight. Yeah, Alexi's got a great weapon for the job, though. And he's already cut down the two at the back lines. That's worked wonderfully. Picking up a MAC-10 is not going to get them far. I like that Molotov. Jack's very switched on knows what's going down the molotov can be avoided now and it's worked great for g2 very competitive gaming with very little but unfortunately with a bomb down b and a mac 10 and an armored usp it's not gonna be particularly potent hunter walking into nbk and that would have been the impossible double dink jacks maybe can take an m4 away not to be when nbk is looking as poised as he is that is the third for og Jack scares me though. He still dinked him. Mm. Like I, I, he, de you know, when you guys were like, oh, you know, he's, he's Namer. Keep your eye on him. I hadn't seen it, mm. and then I think, you know, in the first debut of this guy, I was like, oh no, okay, he, he actually is like that extra level of spice. He's the extra hot. I get it now. Yeah, exactly. You're at, you know, you're at Nando's. Mm -hmm. You're looking at the oh, the mango lime. I'd... You're like, no, what? Well, I'm gonna really turn up the heat. I'm gonna go for 
hot. You, I don't really, I don't mess with that level of heat. I like it as a dip. I don't like it as a marinade. No, I'm the show off. I'm the, I'm slamming the black bottle Extra on the table hot. with my first date. You know God what I'm. Mean. Damn, you're impressive. Yeah. <laughs> Double XL. All that. Ooh. Didn't hear what you said, Chad. So, so I thought I thought Issa saw where that smoke came from. It didn't really matter because Hunter took him out of the equation. But the trade has come on early. And now they already have connector control here. So if they want to apply more pressure to A, they can. It's going to be quick onto it. Oh, it is. And let's not forget, Amanek and Kenny are two glass cannon orbs. This retake, if the bomb does go down, probably cancelled. And that's if the bomb goes down. It does certainly look probable. Gap in that smoke, hunting Kenny further. One warning shot from Alexi did connect. And I will remind you, two glass cannons. Nexa and Amanek still on B. As soon as this bomb goes down, I've already got a, a vibe that this, is a, this round is over. And with Nexa's death, yeah, that probably is... Going to seal the deal. He's back sticking around. Oh, okay, I thought Manti might have gone B apartments. This is... What did what, what G2 think? I don't know. This, this is just throwing their money down the bin. Oh, brother. Oh, gee. They, are, they can't believe their luck. Amanek still showing that there is another AWP in play. They should chase now. You can see the little... Get on it. Orange dots on the radar moving around quite swiftly here, but with him tucked all the way in towards the back of the B bomb site, he might be all right. And the man to be the most forward facing of all of them, I highly doubt he'll be the gentleman going for the chase, but good Ooh. stuff. Do they save these double orbs into the T side when they know it's going to be a janky, weird, pistol aggressive? There we go. He swapped okay, it away. Few, 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 few. You're right. It would have been very silly to bring two orbs into the following round, knowing that you're going up against just the orb on Amanek and probably a half buy or some upgraded pistols on the side of things from G2 there. Now, this is the similar fashion into the way D2 started, right? When we went all the way back into that quarterfinal, it was like OG were doing really nice plays. Mm -hmm. G2 were kind of struggling to hold on, but they still managed to hold on. It was a competitive half. Then once again, we started the second half. The game was slipping away from them. OG were looking fantastic to close. And then G2 with that newfound mental resilience were able to come on back through Jax, one of the individuals that we have been highlighting here. So you can see the scoreline four to two, the first two rounds coming through to Fuses. OG being able to get it done by detonation in rounds number three and six. And Kenny, with only one kill to his name, they're going to need him to come to alive on those AWPs. It was quite a simple approach onto that A side. It wasn't anything crazy with the smokes. It wasn't awesomely well executed. It was just good timing. There was the misdirection towards middle, took Hunter, the connector player, out of the equation, and then applied pressure. And they have now alleviated some for themselves. So OG are sitting very pretty to convert out five. And the, yeah? I was just going to say, oh, sorry, I, carry on, carry on, please. I don't know where I was going. <laughs> So I was going to say, it's the first time I feel like when we've had those close rounds at the start where the T's keep buying into it, of course, you know, on the Galils and they have the better buy, that it's worked out this well. Mm. Like the economy's been garbage for G2 now. Ooh, Nexa. Still alive. It would be lovely to have a bit of something to play with there, but there goes the up. Yeah, then they're going to think it's clear. So he's got a real shot, and that's a really nice tracking on a moving target. Unfortunately, not necessarily going to translate into anything more tangible. Can't get the orb. They're trying to pick it up at the bench. Oh. Kenny's doing everything he can. Can he get away? Yes, he can. And he can... Oh, I thought he had a kill there. Yeah, he was set for success, but Valder's taken that from him. The orb will lie idle. Jax's deagle quite the opposite. Not far off. Whistles a shot past the ear of Jax, and that's multiple targets. Bit too overwhelming, and OG can connect. They'll convert and be happy to be posting five. It is back into the rifles for your G2 squad. Third map, second series of our uh, first day. PSL Pro League Season 12. Are they going to rock the double up again? They are. Okay, so that means there's two players on the CT side of things for G2 with basically no utility. Kenny only has a smoke. Amanek has none. And if G OG actually just go for a set piece into a bomb site, we saw what's happened to G2 before against those kind of plays. So just a standard mid utility to hold them at bay here. G2 also went for mid control. I like that deep smoke that came in. I, I don't know if it was Jax who did it for himself, but there was that deeper smoke towards the top of middle they just threw out, maybe to try and facilitate that close mid play he went for in the end. That's quite fun uh, just to watch them try and evolve how they want to take that space. And really fun, actually. We saw Mirage actually get a change to it because of a smoke that Astralis were, had found from CT spawn to the top of middle. Mm. It basically completely locked out that early mid play. You could push T CTs up. So they've widened that where, exactly where Alexi B is, so now it can't be covered by one smoke. How exciting. Power of Astralis. Yeah. <laughs> we also now have to drop a Molotov there to hold them at bay, and there's always going to be a bit of a, a gap coming in late. Yeah, something's so you, awkward. Yeah, look how thorough they have to be now. So they're using a Molotov to clear out the top mid box just because of that possibility. But as we can see on the radar, there is nobody in middle, there's nobody in connector, and there's nobody even pushed up close cat. So G2 are banking on this, 
and it will actually be a B split. So this timing here from Nexa could be everything. Oh, Amanek, the timing. Let's see how it's like. Oh, Nexa just ate that flash. Valda, signed, sealed, and delivered. Amanek's in all it's kinds more. of danger. He really needs more, and he's going to be tested. Is that bringing the bomb? Valda's going to drop the sight. Going to get swung on before he can bolt the rifle, and Kenny need a couple more from Kenny. Now, can he fill the void that Amanek has left? Bomb down, hard to retake. If you really want to strafe into that one, is up. Do so with a flashbang first. Jax is on his way towards short. Kit check two. Smoke as well on Hunter. Positioned nicely. Alexi being boosted up for an elevated and a more painstaking adjustment of his cross there. Yeah, Mantu's not quite going to catch the timing on this one. Kenny already fi finds one. Mantu hiding it towards get right. He's been taken down, and that's the end of that. That was a perfect retake. Kenny gets three in the round, two in the retake, with the AWP no less. I said it's hard. I definitely didn't say it's impossible, and Kenny proving that right there and then. So three, four, G2 on this defense. It is still a little bit wobbly for them. This was Amanek's contribution. Yeah, I thought when he went down without Mora, it was probably the site given up completely. It was just a bit of a unfortunate timing with Mantu moving. But Kenny awareness to check that boost position. That was the opening right there and a good round. He's up to four kills, three in that round alone. So he's online now and the double ops are back on out. Amanek and Kenny can have some utility behind it this time. But now we might just see one of these set pieces that I was talking about. You can see over towards the B side of things, all five members ready to unleash fury on Amanek and overrun him. Ooh, good nade, but he's about to be fully flashed. Throws out one of his own design. I'm short too. Yeah, the double orbs to defend B. This is the only one that slipped the net so far, and Kenny won't have a chance. Oh, Great wow. shot from Issa. Hunter back in. G2 just taking it in turn. Trading blows into this B site. Numbers do favor OG. Plenty of time to be getting that bomb down. That's the responsibility of Mantu. And now NBK keeping the wolf from the door. Amanek caught on the rotate through kitchen. Nexus does oh, have an aware. He does have an advantage while the smoke fades though, so Nexus will push the trigger oh. first and Valda responds in kind. <sighs> well, back and forth we go. Yeah, trading rounds, trading places. Uh it's five in a row for OG that did put theirs on the board, yeah. but now of course G2 responding with a nice pair. Never was a fan of pears. I love a pear. It's too soft. I feel, feel like the old people fruit. It certainly has. I, I have hit 30. Got the stereotype attached to it. I just think they're really tasty. Have you ever had a Nashi pear? What's that? It's a mix. Well, it's probably, it's... it's Like a hybrid, GMO. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, I, I think it's it's like a pear that right. has apple texture. Oh, wow. Ooh. That, that, that sounds really banging. probably confused me, though. I quite like the soft. I seem to remember at one point, someone in the office, Lauren, had these sweets that you could eat and then they'd make sour things sweet and sweet things sour. There was that time. That it's was like a peculiar curious, natural yeah. natural remedy. But oh you can, gosh, I remember you could that. You take it and then you could take a big bite of a lemon and it would taste really sweet. Mm. God, I do remember that. Well, yeah, very peculiar. Mm. You could have a sweet on onion or something. Ugh. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> there is, there is a lot of sugar grapes. in apples. Don't be, do, do be watching that intake, guys, as my dad would say. I don't know if Hunter was spotted here, but either way, they need to be careful. Yeah, that Molotov is going to say the jig is up and they will be trying to get on out. Unscathed not to be the case. And over towards A is where they're actually posturing right now. A little Where's bit Kenny? of utility oh. being used has kept Kenny's nose between ramp and palace, but corralling back towards spawn will now be the remainder of these OG troops setting themselves up for an execute. If Kenny stays here the whole time, that's going to be wild. I don't think they'd be expecting that. I, I thought he might be in dark or something weird, but no, this makes more sense than that. But <laughs> Look at G2, though. By the time the OG get here, they've got four yeah. CTs all just happily digging their heels in. Just Kenny really actively mid. holding Palace. This is going to be mad as hell. That's going to stall him out. Yep. We're going to get those nades flying in, so perhaps they just want to press go, but there's going to be so much utility thrown that way. Valda. Opens up the play, flashing as well. Oh, this is actually potential now. If Amanek and Hunter don't start fragging, Alexi B makes sure Hunter doesn't add to the oh, list. And Alexi nice. B. Navy Jax, only the one. Looks like OG have successfully found the seventh here. They're pulling G2 across the map. They were in the right place at the right time with plenty of time, but it's Valda who finds a crucial opening frag into this play. Now Nexa in the 1v3, he's all the util 
to blast. He knows where both of them are positioned. <laughs> Nicely done. I am amazed that Alexi B double checked that. Yeah, me too. Like, you know what? And uh, Kenny pushed up that far bit weird. Okay, we'll, we'll kind of be like, all right, that's fine. He fell back. He died. You, you clear the first who was facing from dark, and you have the audacity, the presence of mind to still check. I was thinking, well, that's them done. No, 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 no. Alexi B, very smart boy. Yeah, Kenny, his focus got completely taken away from that ramp position after he had found the early kill into Easter in holes, so left him fully exposed and nobody there to protect. And now, OG with seven rounds to their name, look poised to post an eight. There's Alexi B leading by example, leading from the front, grabs one. Tags up Amanek, could be finding a second here as the grenade oh, it goes a little bit shy. Still gets the kill on the cleanup duty he is. And now three more CTs are trying to take him out of the equation and they will do, but the bomb's down, the site's given up. OG are looking good. Yeah, really good. Um, in other news though, did you know that America sells microwavable bacon? That sounds terrible. Doesn't that just sound like what? a horrible combination of words? Microwavable bacon. Good So grief. it's just wobbly. Yeah, just so like a cardboard. Oh. Great reactions from Mantu. Eesh. Yeah, we saw his quick 4K over on Inferno, definitely giving Lauren what she was hoping to see, a bit more of a player profile as to what to expect from this uh, multinationality gamer. And that is eight. Jax wants to find something here, and this is to babysit, so nobody's going to get too upset. I wonder if Nexa holds on to this and uses the MP9 upgrades because we're getting to the tail end and the business end of this first half. And if he has that weapon in play and is unable to make it sing, then look, sure, going forward, he's going to have more money to buy guns. But if it's a difference between a round and just a weapon in the following and they lose the following round as well, then maybe the investment would be worth it. The double orbs, again, Amanek, Kenny S, both rocking them. They'll be sending Nexa over towards B with that SMG. Kenny poised towards middle from the A site. Now he's actually moving up towards connected, but it's back over towards the B site they go again. Yeah, maybe they found something that works or they feel works, and it's certainly done well to put them on eight so far. And we go again, four, actually no, all five here. Not not even defaulting, not even pretending. It's all in. Amanek, let's hope this double orb can hold back the flood. We have the SMG, but it's him who's got the firepower to do something about it. Oof, Alexi's done great work there, and that's the orb gone. $7,000 just squandered on the floor. Make sure it's a little further out the door. OG have done magnificent work here with what they brought into the fray. Now, the fact that Alexi manages to take such high-value players out of the serve with only an SMG, he will be stopped eventually, but oh. he actually dinged Hunter Jax versus NBK. Now, the smoke kit there, but NBK, he plays this smartly. Oof, wow, that is ambitious. He went wide on the AWP. Had he missed the shot, there was a world in which Jax could have taken that. It's nine, though, to three. We're going to see a timeout called, looks like it's a G2. So two remaining from G2. Just taking a moment to compose themselves and take stock of what they have to do. 9-6, a necessity if they want to have an impact here on our Mirage. I think this is like the similar point in that Dust 2 game where the script kind of shifted a little bit. They came online, they were able to post up a couple of rounds, and then once we got to the second half and they were back against the wall, they, they came alive again. So maybe it's the pressure needing to wake up G2 here, but this map is running away from them very quickly. Yeah, that is the case. So the last three rounds of the game, when they were playing Dust 2 in their first half on the T side, they converted the final three. So maybe we see G2 come alive right here, and they're able to post up the most respectable scoreline they can, which would be six rounds on the CT half. It's SMGs aplenty. You can see Hunter on the MP7, Amanek with the UMP, Nexa onto the Famous, and well, Kenny with the AWP. He needs to find a bit more impact. We were talking about his success in the earlier rounds. Nice little molly here, line up from Nexa. So you can you throw, oh, there he is, there's the man. He said you wanted more. He started really well. That's the perfect beginning. He needs to keep it going. It's not just because it's a Kenny thing, just because they damn well need some impact in this. Same can be said for Amanek when he had his AWP as well in the doubles. Wasn't finding much. Jackson Hunter, though. Oh, he's uh, he found a freebie. Expects the flex, and he gets it. That's a double. And A is looking very vulnerable, even with Kenny there. And he's been um, just done by NBK. Yeah, OG, they've got a bit of flair now. I feel like they're having fun in their comms as well. Oh, dear. 
And yeah, this is going to oh, be a nasty, nasty, nasty death for Nexa. Look at the trigger discipline. You nice for both of them. Oh. This is, I mean, this is Mirage. And let's not forget the interview we, we had, I believe it was with uh, NBK, just giving some credit where it was due to the uh, T side calling of Alexi on Mirage specifically, one of Alexi's favorites to call upon. And it certainly does translate here into his, their opening game of the round robin stage. Yeah, for ESL Pro League's 12th season. Which group are we in now? I think it's the A. EA. That's what I was going to yeah. say. I had a 50-50 chance. Yeah, nice little one-two punch from Alexi. 10 to 3. Oh, it's just the Deagles now. Things on the G2 side of the server. Probably feeling a little bit limp at the moment. Need someone to make a big play to fire them up. But I feel like OG are just constantly making these really good calls and trading off of each other very well. It's like the fundamentals and the basics, which we're seeing separate the two. G2's multi-kill potential and the fact that they should have more firepower. We're not seeing it. We're definitely not seeing it. Yep, X-Factor a little missing in this game. We saw, it a, we saw glimpses of it in other maps. It's definitely not completely gone at all, but feels a little flat here on Mirage, in my word. Almost falling off this, but... Double back, we go. MDK working up through connector. That's big. Takes down Hunter. And start leaning into this if they fancy. Still plenty of targets. And Nexo this time not going to connect anything. But Jax is still around. That's all. Just Jack, no Jill, and absolutely no chance to get up this hill. Four players up against him. And that's the end of that. Clean. Just clean. Yeah, I mean, that's, this This will be the post-match segment if it continues in this way. Just summarizing OG's cool, un, calm, collected approach on this T side. It's been very clean so far. G2, a quick recap of where those rounds were manifested. Uh, it was the pistol. And the one after that. Yeah, and that, remember yes. that was the force by battle at the start of the yeah, game. It with is. And as soon as they lost to the second bout of Galils there in round number three, it's basically been downhill since. All have required diffusers for these three rounds on the board here. Oh, might be a slight gap in the smoke there, but look how quick they are up middle. Hunter's going to get isolated again. They know his position well. And Kenny, he pokes his barrel out. Here we are. MBK definitely looking a bit more venomous and pointy today. Oh, there's a multiple targets, and he finds his crosshair in the middle of both of them. A great flick from Amaneki looking for the multi. MBK continues to keep OG in this round. Silenced eventually. Alexi to clutch. A smoke and a plant wouldn't go amiss. Choosing to fake it out, see if he can draw. Okay, good info and avoids the nade. Now he can get that bomb down uncontested. Let's see what you got, Alexi B. Oh my word, that's so beautiful. We'll break down as to why, but Kenny still checks, but he still dies. Jax now, right back into it, saves the day, but my word, Alexi B almost had him. Yeah, he found just a slight gap in the rotate. He knew there'd be attention to be drawn to closing that gap and sweeping through window with no contact meant he did have that element of surprise. It's real.
OG map three, game two, day one, season 12 of ESL Pro League. I've got Machine, Spange, Spange? Spange. <laughs> and Pansy <laughs> hanging out with us. But it's good to have Spange here, that's for sure. <laughs> He's always bringing that energy. He's always bringing that smile, that accent. What a charmer. Oh. And of course, G2's probably not feeling particularly charmed by the Counter-Strike they've been letting out in this first half. It was a great call from the uh, T side of Alexi B. He got them 11 rounds, and you can see GG.bet giving them the heavy edge. Pansy, I assume you're in a similar boat. I'm loving it. Alexi B, 18 kills. Oof. Leading by example, that train game when he was doing it, he's kind of rekindled that fire. Obviously not the last train game, the one not so long ago, but we are into this. We're live as G2 power up middle. We've got the play towards Shaw. We've got the play towards Jungle. They're just about everywhere. But the important thing is they had success on Shaw, and now B is vulnerable. Absolutely, Spangy. Good shots next uh, on to NBK. Nantu going to have to try and close that Oof. gap with shots like that. Amalek's biding his time. No one's looking his way. Oh, oh perfect off angle. Exploits that. He's still arriving but they were already postured so aggressively towards this uh, kitchen exit. Nade to guise the footsteps. It's not going to work, and the duel not won. It's a... Ooh! Actually, Alexi, he's drawing fire. Hunter and Kenny finally arriving in the feed for that 2v2 conversion. Two quick kills, finds the fifth. G2 needed that to get off to their flying start, and it will have to be a flying start. Now, three of their rounds that they posted, two of them were in the first two rounds of play. Different set of circumstances required. And already you're going to be seeing the CTs force up. Okay, so Chadney, this is a... It's a curious one, right? Because if they lose this, yeah. they should take the eco in the following. And at that point, we've got G2 up to seven rounds. If they lose the first gun, oh, it's fast day. Very, oh, very two. fast. He's uh, blind all alone. Does get one. Look how low they got them, but they still stand. Alexi B removed. It's Hunter right there. The smoke wall stands. And these two CTs... I don't know if they can find any avenue back in. A little bit of damage here and there would be great, but I love this so far. Nice, powerful approach from G2. He asked you, where's that energy gone? Where's that power gone? Where's that assertive play we saw before? And it all fell apart on train during, obviously, ESO on Cologne. But here, they look a little bit reinvigorated. And four alive, a bomb plant would be gorgeous for them in this. Back pedaling out. MBK wants to hold on to the SMG. Hold it going, searching, see if he can maybe find somebody slacking, but they're dipping on back. They should be all right. MBK is pushing forward. He wants some kills here, so he gets himself a bit of extra money. We'll even get away with it. Unless Amanek dives out the window like a madman, and he is. That's two for MBK, so MBK is going to be very happy with that. Gets to keep the gun. They really didn't have a chance of winning that round right there whatsoever. And this is where it all kicked off. Nice and fast. There's 145 on the clock as that kill goes down. So within the first 10 seconds, they were already all over the A bomb site. And then once the scout player here of Alexi's dead, well, she opened for business. Now, the problem that I was uh, leading towards right here. Oh, he's happy with that one. Okay. He's so he's, he's not too unhappy. So the, the, what I was leading towards here is if OG lose this one, which they should, Hunter's just been knifed. That's not the love taps that we're looking for. Not with the rifle. And then the first gun round falls in the favor of OG as, uh, of G2 as well. We're already back to an almost tied game. So things can spiral out of control very, very quickly. And now that Amanek has taken down MBK, that's the one step in the right direction. That's the biggest step as well. He was the MP9. Let's not forget that. His successful save in the underpass is same location where he ends up squandering it. Going aggressive makes a lot of sense. He would have enabled his teammates to stack on A with info 
perfect package. But uh, no information anymore. Alexi B is going to have to fill that void, albeit just a, a fresh pair of eyes. Going to be glancing at that cross in apps. You can see he's all set up to communicate that effectively. But this is Mirage, and this is a rather standard set of circumstances. You're going to be seeing a re-smoke window. Flash him up towards connector. Clear those closed corners, tuck in on the right there. And we'll just jump straight through it. There you go, that works too. And he does call at least one towards A. It's enough just to sacrifice Jack's sacrificial lamb, head over towards the open site. So G2 have played this very well. Yeah, it's nice to see G2 going through the paces here, being very cautious, not try, you know, trying to minimize any risks that they could get caught out on. We know the power of the pistol. We don't need to mess with that anymore. And who's left? Valder, Mantu, and Alexi B. We have the Uspus, CZ, and the Deagle. Could do a little bit of damage, but I don't feel they're particularly in any position to do as such. Mantu, probably heard by Amanek. Yeah, and he wants to farm, of course. So he's already removed from the equation. And the other two, nowhere really to write home about. I Alexi test B's my, not gonna do my much. knowledge with you just quickly, Lauren. Sure. Uh, would that have been a ghost, a frenzy, and a sheriff? Correct. Wow. I still Good call boy. him. Look, I mess up so much. It's all right. I guess so many people. It is not a bomb site, it's a spike. Shut up. Oh, get oh. Don't call it CT. It needs its own identity. Do you remember? Shut up. Do you re <laughs> oh, I don't. When I, when I started <laughs> casting Call of Duty, it was uh, the console scene. Now they're, oh. now, now they're unfamiliar, Chadney, with the word frag. Now, obviously, I'm a, I'm a FPS commentator from sure. many years, and I couldn't stop saying frag uh, and the, frag for them's the a nade i think yeah right? I had, well i had to explain to the the, the, the origins of the word in yeah. e sports commentary fragmentation device isn't the only one but it was just because we got all bibbly bobbly when we blew oh. up in waking ut but um yeah it did it definitely got under my skin i just said no i'm gonna keep saying it and eventually they got over it that's oh. nice i like yeah. that I'll, I'll i will probably bend and break and just kind of bow down to the community's wishes because i'm soft um, <laughs> but in reality, what we are seeing from the CTs is actually really exciting. A little bit of information gathering missions over towards ramp. They found out nothing's there, and that will bode well as well. Yeah, look at Jax's smoke he just threw behind them. Like, I mean, he, th that smoke at the top of middle is thrown by a T side. I don't know why. Maybe um, a flank could come into play that might have heard the aggression, or he's fluffed it. I don't know. Either way, Alexi is going to handle this, or at least tempt, attempt to. No, don't he's out of position right now. One for one into the site. NBK is doing fantastic work. Couldn't quite get the crosshair onto the head. Balder, Kenny oh. dead. Oh, he stands his ground. That's magnificent. Hunter thrust into a clutch courtesy of the Viking. And he will have time to get it down. They just need to group up. No kit. So if he can make this awkward, if he can rot the clock a little bit here, Hunter's going to have a real shot. Let's live in his eyes here. No funny business. And he doesn't have any answers here, so sound cues are important too. Let's keep it quiet. Oh, they line up, but it's a perfect frag. Just could not collect an easier pair in a clutch. Just like that, unawares. Now, this is the picture I was painting after that CT side of force by that they ran over to win, right? Look how quickly this has spiraled. Look at the score line and look at the decision that OG have to make. Hunters just won a massive clutch. He's taken everything away from them. They weren't able to save it. They weren't able to put themselves in a scenario where they can even have a limp on him by here. And at this point, they just have to go for the Deagles. A couple of smokes, and Kenny's already plucked one out of the air. So this should be 11 to 9 in favor of OG still. But you can see now this cycle, how that's going to continue forward. Just how quickly G2 are able to catch on up here. This is, it, it is good to see. I know we keep hammering home this like resilience aspect to G2, but it's very real. My uh, bookmark of where I saw some of these players back back when, and you know, we dip in with them and it certainly wouldn't have been, oh, they can come back. I wouldn't have put all my faith and stock in it, but they're showing they certainly have the potential here after this performance thus far, at least. They've certainly shown grit and determination, especially in the uh, essence of Hunter in that previous round. But these three for the CTs, these are Valde and Mantu. Any position to succeed, I guess they could do some work down middle. There's always some damage to be had there. Hunter's going to be the first to step out of line here. Oh, they're waiting on the edge of that smoke. No one willing to advance. He's using that smoke for one last play, and it's to surprise Hunter. Great shot. Need a second not to be. They have kept it competitive, though, and... 
With this is so forwardly pushed up through Palace, he'll call a ramp clear. They're going to wrap back in towards that A site. He's going to have a chance to contest from that ramp, man. Oh. Two! Oh, okay, a chance squandered. Weapon recovered. It's only a Mac 10. Molotov perhaps could be... Oh, no. Oh, he's thrown it away. And that's all right. Finding the head of Jax, surviving to tell the tale. Kenny brought down to a low HP as well. And Snexa to save the day, though. And unfortunately for Issa, that is about where the round does end. So a pair of frags for Nexa and Kenny. And this gap, Chad, is getting closer and closer. They have all the ca cash they need to be spending into this one. Amnek opting for a deliberate MAC-10. He's got 6k in the bank. We've seen a bit of that this game from both teams, actually. Yeah. On the, When they've had a lot of cash, they've just been going for the, the MAC-10 rounds. And it's not... It's showing now, like Counter-Strike, the, the devs wanted a lot of guns to be viable. Well, teams now are getting much better at using them and making them viable even in full buy rounds, which is a fast day. That's all it is to it. Issa, the only one really with anything to say about it just yet. Everyone else a little bit further back behind the smokes that were put into play. And there he goes. I mean, Valda held back Molly in place. Nice work from him to find. I think it was Jax on the receiving yeah, and end. Yeah, let Amanek through. So MBK is going to be responsible for that CT flank. It looks like Amanek just dropped all of his util to possibly oh. get close. He's closing this gap. He's such a rascal. Such a rascal with this SMG. You see the opening frag he got on triple. Now his position alone, he doesn't have to worry about... This Any long-range fights, they're not going to expect this. That's another fully armored up play. He's going to nearly get a third there. But I'm afraid the damage is done. Looking to come back into this one. Looking to see OG break their CT silence. We've yet to see them post a single round here. It's a good shot. Hunter could be molotov out of position here. And it's going to be down to hurt this quick AWP shot of Mantu to profit from it. There it is. Kenny to clutch. No time. Someone needs to get on. Oh! Boom! Damn, Kenny. Where'd you find this? Diffusing. No problem. And that's G2 saved by the Kenny S and continue to see an absolutely mute OG defense. That's two clutches coming out on the side of G2 here in pivotal rounds and pivotal gun rounds, right? They won the one on the B site with Hunter. Now this one from Kenny with that flick on up with the AWP. Hello. Show me your boots. I'll make sure they're the first thing to hit the ground. And then over the top, he pops easy as you like. But they are pivotal rounds right now because look what that's going to do yet again. You see what it means to Jax? It is a very vital round and they continue to just rack these on up. And the CTs should just opt for the half by again. This is the cycle. 3,400. You know, limp on in, partial investment, couple of deagles. Well, deagles across the board, utility as well. G2 with this, we're back, we're tied 11-11, and they've actually done this straight. They haven't had any disruptions. Now let's remember, we were talking about resilience with G2. OG are the one with nightmares right now. They've been on the receiving end of these horrible games where they just, you know, they're up on the half, they're feeling it, they're feeling good, and then suddenly things start going wrong. LXCB trying to hold on to it though. He's taking personal accountability, it feels, for some of these rounds, but the big B stack is what they're still banking on. Yeah, and Alexi, he's called his team to stack B, and he's solo A, and got the necessary kill to channel them into the stack. I mean, he really couldn't be doing more for his squad right now. Valda just has to execute. Okay, now we really are cooking with gas. AK picked up. Hunter to claw this back and stabilize. Will this really be the first CT round? Nexa doesn't seem to think so. Double kill. Kenny as well, filling the feed. It's all onto Alexi. He started this, and he's going to have to finish it all on his own. No health. No armor. Now, Molotov's going to get him somewhere. Kenny burning into the open space, but dunked on. And that is going to be G2 continuing this oh. unbeaten spree. A slew of seven rounds so far to start off this T side. Next up, some great calling from him. It's very reminiscent of what we saw from OG's first half. But as Chad has been outlining and keeping his finger firmly on the pulse of, it is definitely uh, the CT decision to force into that second, just having ramifications throughout. Util deagles, weapons, lose, etc. Let's see if they want to change things up a little bit here. We are seeing Mantu go for an aggressive AWP underpass. Not sure if this is deliberate, but I'm very intrigued to know how well this shapes up. No sound cues, no fights. Will Kenny have a look? He won't believe this. <laughs> okay, Kenny caught. OG with an opening kill. This is a little new look. Will NBK be able to weather this storm on his own? He is on an island, and fortunately for him, that frag from Mantu has got G2 a little confused. It's definitely sent shockwaves. See what they do with it now. I'm, I'm waiting to see what the lean is from G2. We had that player towards Palace. They've kind of peeled away. We had that mid-presence also peeled away. Boost him. Look at this. They thought he was underpassed behind him. Now he's oh, being boosted up and perfectly baby. positioned. 
he can sweep. Huge. Yeah, if he sweeps into this line, there you go. Pause. He's set. He is set up for success. And okay. Just gonna oh. slip off the ledge. He's still safe as houses. Lots of multiple targets dropping into the site and it's held at bay. Great round from OG. What a turn of events. There we go. Nice work from Man too. I mean, that start, how do you predict that? that? I don't think you see that every round or every day. So I don't blame them for falling for a little, but at least for G2, they get on the board finally. It felt like a lifetime. The opening though from the big man Ting. So look, if, if we're going to look at how these rounds have panned on out until this point, there's only been two CTs who have survived in this spree. And that was the second round of the game with the saved SMG from MBK and the saved pistol on the other surviving player. Then they've just had a clean CT sided gun round and they need to make sure they can do that again because the money is already on the back foot for G2. Here we go. Kenny, not going to make a miss out of that one. Quite the opposite. This has gone very early. Full pulls out a smoke of Valder's design. Seems that Mantu's push inspired Hunter to give it a go this time, just to clear, call that clear at the very least. Plenty of util on the T side. Checking back in, or do we have three smokes? Full One exec. just used to mid. Okay, so different plan. Mid smoke does definitely draw the attention of Mantu. Alexi's on his way as well, so they have three here to deal with this. Oh, man, to the timing. Peels away from mid. Dashing Maybe for Valder. a flash, yeah. Looking to help out Valda potentially. And this could be huge. Oh, they're all lined up. He gets two for it as well. That is excellent work. Wow, they chose the oh. right man. Nexa right back with one of his own. Double kill, G2. Do not bend. Do not break. NBK, just like that, has to accept the round's over. That was the power of Nexa. My God, those frags. Good catch from Rushley. Just storming out of Palace through the Molotov for a double. I'm just so impressed that teams can always think on their feet and they always have like an alley-oop, you know, there's always a way to help. And then the reaction from the other side of things, oh, they just flashed here, there was an assist, we can catch them out of position. The mind games and the level of Counter-Strike that gets played these days compared to how it was, it's so much more team-based, right? Across oh. the board, even even in teams who we look at and say, no, you know, they're really firepower-based. There's always, you know, the element of flashing for each other, baiting for each other, trading with each other, and offering MBK up a bit of a freebie right there. Money, like I mentioned before, is not that great on the G2 side of things, so Kenny and Nexa will need to hold on to their guns. Can drop an AK across each. Jackson Hunter will need one so they can get full kits of utility. And the CTs, because previously OG had that clean round on round number 23, they will be able to buy again, but that's unfortunate. Volda did a lot there. Oh, the aim on that man. You're right though, Chad. I hadn't considered that. The flash assist from Mantu meant he'd have to be a bit more further forward to have a viable position to be flashing ramp that deep. Mm. And that's the AWPA of the team. That's perhaps what incited Nexa to be going for such a procedural tri triple box isolating angle. We're into 12-12. This <laughs> colossal lead from OG at the half has been completely and totally nullified. This really is the round though. Loss bonus for the CTs is 3,400, it's maxed out, but unless they save guns, they will be unable to buy in the following. And for G2, their loss bonus has now trickled back down to 1,400. So we really, really have a lot riding on this round right here. Round number 25, and that's an opening from Alexi. The in-game leader steps up, the double AWP comes out and um? continuing to lead from the front. Hunter's really happily to be, well, doing what Hunter used to do an awful lot on this T side. I haven't seen too much of it yet. It's been a bit more of a uh, larger plan, but it's always exciting to see him in his uh, aforementioned spot being baited in by his teammate. With the legs. Yep. Ooh, okay. What's this? I assume it's just going to be a, okay, it does it and covers off the angles connector smoke. Walking up instead, so. Connector held by Amanek. That nade set costs him his life under trades. That was the intention. However, it's not gonna shape up well for them unless 
Ale Amanek can isolate some fights, and he has done well to find Issa. Mantu forced off the line. Bombs in middle. And he could be in trouble here. 20 seconds, and he has the player to deal with it short. Okay. Flash is perfect. And now the frag shows up for Amanek. You said how important this one was, Chad. 10 seconds. They will get this plant down. Oh my Amanek God. is a gamer. What? Look at him go. Leaping in, flashed in by Hunter. They've turned this completely around, and it's Amanek that gets the credit. One more for good luck. Hunter steals it from him, but credit where it's due. Yeah, this is the two of them. Big Amanek round. and Hunter on a crucial round of gameplay. Let's see if we can see some of those again. So Alexi, he does take matters into his own hands. He gives them that opening frag. He even spots the bomb, but Amanek gets info. He's flashed in and gets that frag for free. It's his teamwork again. Like, they're playing in like a two-on-three, two-on-four situation just there, and they're still helping each other, flashing. You know, it's not just going around finding the frag. So really good stuff there. And now you can see what it's done to the money. They've had to go for another partial. Easter's gone for a hero M4. In the next round, he will get 3,400. means he can afford. But that's 14 on the board for G2 if they do convert this uh, one, which they should. Amanek, I do. Uh, I've got a soft spot for him. The fact that we're still seeing that SMG, and even better now, there's not a single helmet in play. That weapon is going to hurt. And he has a lot more liberal... Uh, give me that words. He has a lot more freedom uh, in terms of how he can approach his movement in this game. Much more difficult or those deagles to find two consistent body shots if he's going like Speedy Gonzalez into the angles. Okay. So, the whole lean of this round is what can those CTs do with so little money, so little on their side, down to a smoke and one flash? Is there anything they can muster here? Because so far, G2 have looked exceptional. As you said, in the you know, team play manner in the setting each other up, the post plants, the ways to the bomb. It's all been perfect. But for now, they're trying to maybe feel out if there's a stack, what's coming up against them, where the threats are. Set Amanek into play, and that's exactly what he's doing. Getting a little brave, a little bold, and you can see as to why the man's hey. nuts. Oh, that's gorgeous, gorgeous stuff from him. And while all this happens, Hunter opens up B. It's the subtle kill, but it's the one that truly uh, will potentially close the round as Jax picks up where his buddy left off. Kenny to close. Nicely done by G2. Not too many threats. Yes, they lost out on Jax, I guess, would be the only one to worry about as Amanek was with that Mech 10. He was more than willing to give his life for the greater good. And now well, they need to give something on the OG side because 14 on the board for G2 means one more and they'll have secured overtime. It would be interesting if we found ourselves in overtime after what happened in the quarterfinal back on there in ESO 1 Cologne. I'm sure you've heard us talk about that time and time again. So let's see. Do OG have anything left in the tank? Anything to give? Or will it be another close but no cigar type moment? Oh, I can't be another one of them. I'm just so exhausted of having that team talk. I've lots of good stuff today, guys. Just an undertone of disappointment in the comms. Oh, missed window smoke just there. Not sure if that's going to be a huge problem as they don't want to be fighting middle. The biggest deal is Volda, but it's B. Yeah, and MBK could be baited in nicely here. That should be a double bomb as well. Looking very good for OG, but last time I said that, Kenny, and the previously was, oh, capable of turning things around. Not this time at all. Nice shutdown from OG here, leaving Nexa in a rather predictable spot and a rather predicament. He's eliminated. Nice work, MBK, baited in by Alexi's utility. 26 frags for them on Alexi, 21 for MBK, respectively. So they have been definitely leading in the uh, the fragging totals. Alexi definitely continuing to catch my arm, Mirage. There's a back 10 on the floor. Oh, yes. You better believe it. Where's Nexus spawn for just here? Back towards the A side of things. So probably won't be a quick round in play. Hunter's doing something fast, maybe, because he's only got a smoke grenade. Doesn't really want to squander all of that stuff doing something aggressive. He is. He's just charging straight through his B smoke and apps, but he's already found oh. MBK. Look at that. Hunter, you cheeky devil. He's just taken the full B site. And that was his intention from the, from the break. He's kitchen completely. What are you meant to do against this sort of player, I guess? It's, it's, it's such a hard thing to capture and Alexi B's on the case. He's trying to do what he can to secure the bomb site. Hunter's still playing ahead of this, keep in mind, but the most of the CT side coming in through short, coming in the way they know how. And actually is cage find Alexi B with the Molly there, flashed up blind. I guess he didn't know where he was. Yeah, and through the smoke, Amanex is gonna catch another one, fully unloads his mag into that uh, smoky void. 
And Mantu and Issa have given a bit of an ultimatum here, and I think there is only one option left for them. 15, and you have to just cut your losses and save. It's a Cruel Mistress's Counter-Strike. You can't even attempt it. You can't even go for it. You can't even think about it, because Mantu needs this orb, and now they know where he is. G2 probably won't present him with too many more kills. They know he's going to have it in the last, or potentially the last round coming up next. Jack's having a gander. There was another flash for him. They, they, I love this. I just love looking at those little details. They're always flashing for each other. That means communication has to be on point. It certainly does. What a T-side this has been from G2. My goodness. First off, was so flat. This doesn't even feel like the same game. No, it doesn't. It's just a two. Very impressive T sides, and that's what you were talking about, Lauren. Yeah, just a, the most unfortunate of spreads. He was on the cusp. He was trying to play he? the edge of the smoke, didn't want to be gray screened himself, had some vision to play around, but it's an unfortunate burn. And yeah, I think his face says it all. Don't have to put any words in his mouth for him. Bunny hopping off your teammate's head puts Nexa in line for a nice quick throw. Where's that going? It's going to be a fast flash, actually, just to get his team up. Mantu not blind. Jax knocked down. And that's the bomb spotted top of middle. You can see Valder just locked in. Next is going to stop it, though. Wow. Just through the corner of the wall, players are getting even more refined at that. Oh, he's done it. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. And next in there. Oh, look at this. This is going to really hurt. Oh, not. Alexi's you know so switched on. To even check on that. I love Let's have that. a look. A cursory glance. What are we left with? Kenny and Hunter. And Kenny a little bit tagged up, a little bit bruised and beaten. Over in CT, posting up his Mantu. Flashed in, Hunter swings. Not bad, but Alexi B found Kenny in the meantime. It's down to just Hunter, and he's been incredible. Head-turning sort of performance for him. And a minute on the board, Ooh. we go around. Yeah, eventually they'll think something's up here, but maybe they have to worry about CT spawn CT as well. First, right? That's also a possibility here because of where that kill came in. So you can see MBK looking towards window. I'm not sure if he's going to be ready for top mid. There could be a freebie here for Hunter. Oh, MBK has just crunched into connector. Still expecting to see a bottom. He should still see him here. He clears his corners. He's looking the wrong way. There we go. Collects onto MBK. 20 seconds. Seconds getting a bit awkward. He just jumped straight over into the Alexi B orb. Ooh, mama. <laughs> Getting close now. Alexi B keeps them in it, and it is Alexi that keeps them in it. I mean, some of the things he's been going, he'd been aware of. I mean, he's clearly well educated, you know, in the G2 playbook, but to be conscious that they got through window and were on the flank, and then here just to finish off on the Hunter's Hunt. Sight from Kenny goes to the last round of regulation. Will we see more OT action from G2 OG? It's the B hit. It has to be the B hit. Look at all this utility coming through with the low SMG buys, the Tech Nines. It looks like they're going fast. No. They don't want to stop. Mantu, can you save Alexi's your team? already on short. Oh, the flashes, the nades, they're good. The T's are out. Yeah, nice shots. Alexi's done the moves to get himself in a supportive position early. Mantu under a lot of pressure. Just tucks in and time barrel spotted. Needs to hit something, but Kenny's already taken him out. And now, with the bomb going down next to Hunter, this is getting really nasty. Three frags is all G2 need to take this series. Wild shot into the smoke. He wants to try and get a smoke onto the bomb, make things awkward. This has already done just that. Next is a bit of a backup plan. They'll be parking him in apps, hoping to catch anyone pushing close. And oh my goodness, this is going to come down to the wire. Smoke's on the CT's kits too, but the bod bodies are dropping. And just need one more. There it is, G2. A full three maps, but they 